I met my wife, she gave me a, she gave me a reason to improve, to be more than just, you know, that dirt bag. Like, cause when I got to Vegas, I was a tech sergeant, she was a tech sergeant, and she was my inspiration, like, and then military calls, and so she went to Alaska, and then I was deployed at the time. I was at, in Saudi Arabia, so. No, we got married in Alaska. We got married first. My accident was August 13th, so I didn't last two weeks, but she stayed with me. I was on a motorcycle heading home. I was less than a mile from home, and that's when I got taken out. Nevada Community Enrichment Program. They have a, they created a, they asked me what I wanted. What did I want when I came back? I was like, well, I want to do this and this. So I have a little little checklist on things that I want to be able to do. So the first one was, I wanted to drive. And so I'm driving now. Okay. I was doing the therapy, doing occupational therapy, physical therapy, and I didn't really get a chance to socialize as much until I got here. I want to be more of a more of a husband. Well, if it wasn't for ASI, I know where I'd be, right where I was before I moved to Minneapolis. And that was at a nursing home here in Rochester. In 1956, I was living right outside of Dallas, working at an aircraft plant. My injury was me and uh, my buddy from Minnesota and then a guy we met down there decided to uh, take a pleasure trip down to Mexico. I was asleep in the back seat. We had an accident. The car rolled over and then I hit my head, paralyzed. Well, it happens that quick. But one day I have a prime of life and the next minute I need complete help for everything. So it was tough for many years to accept the fact that uh, you may have to live the rest of your life like this. I uh, wanted to get out on my own. I didn't want to live in nursing homes no more. And with the help of Curry Center and also ASI, we started planning for uh, some kind of housing when Steve Wiggins worked at uh, Curry Center and uh, he got us all together. And there were plenty of meetings out at the Curry Center. Chuck Berg and Steve Wiggins met with us. We went through different floor plans, moved in there in the Chicago house September 30th, I think, of 1978. But I was the first resident to move in, and it made a difference. I finally had a home. I've been in and out of hospital beds all my life because of the spasticity and the seizures. I had an emphasis in pre-law in political science and then went on to go to law school at the University of Minnesota. But in my last year of college, I sustained an eight-day grand mal seizure. I woke up on a vent from a coma. Everything had to be relearned again. I had to learn to sit, to stand, to feed myself, to walk, to talk, to read, to write. Every cognitive skill I had was gone. I was in a nursing home. You were told when they were going to put you to bed, when you were going to eat, what you were going to eat. There were no choices. Here, I decide what I want to make. I will make spaghetti. Everything is my choice. Now I have to let the noodles get soft. If I were lucky enough to one day get to speak to the people who, who donate to ASI and donate these kinds of buildings, first of all, I would tell them what a fantastic job they're doing, that independence is something that is being achieved. This is what you're building. You are building not buildings, because buildings are just buildings. You are building people's lives and their chance to be independent.
have complete spinal cord injury, so no feeling going down to my legs and no <clears throat> messages going up to my brain. When I had my accident, I fell out of this tree, so I was on the um, ground in the woods for over 20 hours. I had some bleeding in my brain. They weren't even sure if I was gonna remember, you know, what, how to speak English or what my name was or who my family members were. I woke up three weeks after my accident in the hospital. And so I'm lucky to be here today, but uh, it was definitely not an easy ride after the day that I fell. Hit a pretty dark place. Um, it was super depressed. Didn't I lost all my jobs. I lost my home. Um, I lost my car. <clears throat> you know, um, I lost my my girl. I lost like I lost everything. And um, I ended up <clears throat> moving back in with my with my parents. And a huge part of gaining back my independence was having accessible space come in and find me a, an all accessible home where I can have a place for my son to hang out and not, you know, not have my parents um, over my shoulders 24-7. I can actually invite girls over to my place, you know, without having to say, hey, you want to meet my mom, you know, right away. <laughs> Things will, things will work out in the end, you know, especially if you have faith, but you can't do it all on your own. When you get the help that can help you become who you are, um, that's, a, that's truly a blessing. In the rainfall, the rainbow shines and the saving grace forever lies with me and the people and all the things around like the air in the trees the flowers in the ground i am safe i am here and i won't disappear but i'll stay forevermore in your heart unlock the door i'm at your threshold down in union park it's a far wide world but i got a spark to get to know you all the things you do, I can still hold you until I am.